We're calling this opening segment Achieving Prosperity. We have to do a much better job at keeping our jobs, and we have to do a much better job at giving companies incentive to build new companies or to expand, because they're not doing it. And all you have to do is look at Michigan, and look at Ohio, and look at all of these places where so many of their, of their jobs and their companies are just leaving. They're gone. And Hillary, I just ask you this. You've been doing this for 30 years. Why are you just thinking about these solutions right now? For 30 years, you've been doing it, and now you're just starting to think of solutions. Well, actually, I will bring, excuse me, I will bring back jobs. You can't bring back jobs. Well, actually, um, I have thought about this quite a bit. Yeah, for 30 and years. I have, uh, well, not quite that long. Uh, I think my husband did a pretty good job in the 1990s. I think a lot about what worked and how we can make it work again. I think building the middle class, investing in the middle class, making college debt-free so more young people can get their education, helping people refinance their debt from college at a lower rate. Those are the kinds of things that will really boost the economy. Broad-based, inclusive growth is what we need in America, not more advantages for people at the very top. Mr. Trump, we're talking... Typical politician, all talk, no action, sounds good, doesn't work, never going to happen, our country is suffering because people like Secretary Clinton have made such bad decisions in terms of our jobs and in terms of what's going on. You have not released your tax returns. And, and the reason nominees have, have released their returns for decades is that voters will know if their potential president owes money to, who he know, owes it to, and any business conflicts. Uh, don't okay. Americans have a right to know if there are any conflicts of interest? I don't mind releasing. I'm under a routine audit, and it'll be released. And as soon as the audit's finished, it'll be released. You're perfectly free to release uh, your taxes during an audit. And so the question, does the public's right to know outweigh your personal... Well, I told you, I will release them as soon as the audit. Look, I've been under audit almost for 15 years. I will say this, I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes when she releases her 33,000 emails that have been deleted. As soon as she releases them, I will release, I will release my tax returns. So you've got to ask yourself, why won't he release his tax returns? And I think there may be a couple of reasons. First, maybe he's not as rich as he says he is. Second. Maybe he's not as charitable as he claims to be. Third, we don't know all of his business dealings, but we have been told through investigative reporting that he owes about $650 million to Wall Street and foreign banks. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes, because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license, and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero, that means zero for troops, zero for vets, zero for schools or health. We're just opening up on Pennsylvania Avenue, right next to the White House. So if I don't get there one way, I'm going to get to Pennsylvania Avenue another. But we're opening the old post office, under budget, ahead of schedule, saved tremendous money, I'm a year ahead of schedule, and that's what this country should be doing. We build roads and they cost two and three and four times what they're supposed to cost. We buy products for our military and they come in at costs that are so far above what they were supposed to be because we don't have people that know what they're doing. We move into our next segment talking about America's direction, and let's start by talking about race. The African-American community, look, the community within the inner cities has been so badly treated. They've been abused and used in order to get votes by Democrat politicians. You look at the inner cities, and I just left Detroit, and I just left Philadelphia, and I just, you know, you've seen me. I've been all over the place. Uh, you decided to stay home, and that's okay. But I will tell you, I've been all over, and I've met some of the greatest people I'll ever meet within these communities, and they are very, very upset with what their politicians have told them and what their politicians have done. I think Donald just criticized me for preparing for this debate. And yes, I did. 
And you know what else I prepared for? I prepared to be president, and I think that's a good thing. Mr. Trump, you had supported the war in Iraq before the invasion. What makes your I did not what, support what, the war in, two, in Iraq. 2002. That is a mainstream media nonsense put out by her because she, frankly, I think the best person in her campaign is mainstream media. My question Just, is, since you, you, would you like to hear? Him, why is your I was why against is your the judgment? war. Wait a minute. I was against the war in Iraq, just so you put it out. The record shows I, otherwise. The record but why does is, not show that. Why was you, is your the judgment any... The record shows that I'm right. I said it's a terrible and a stupid thing. It's going to destabilize the Middle East, and that's exactly what it's done. It's my, been my, a disaster. My reference was to what you had said in 2002, and my question was, no, no, why, is you didn't hear what I said. why is your judgment any different than Mrs. Clinton? Well, has? I have much better judgment than she does. There's no question about that. I also have a much better temperament than she has, you know? And the worst part no, of what we've heard us. Donald say has been about nuclear weapons. He has said repeatedly that he didn't care if other nations got nuclear weapons, Japan, South Korea, even Saudi Arabia. It has been the policy of the United States, Democrats and Republicans, to do everything we could to reduce the proliferation of nuclear weapons. His cavalier attitude about nuclear weapons is so deeply troubling. That is the number one threat we face in the world, and it becomes particularly threatening if terrorists ever get their hands on any nuclear material. So a man who can be provoked by a tweet should not have his fingers anywhere near the nuclear codes. She spent hundreds of millions of dollars on negative ads on me, many of which are absolutely untrue. They're untrue and they're misrepresentations. And I will tell you this, Lester, it's not nice. And the only gratifying thing is I saw the polls come in today. And with all of that money, we over $200 million dollars is spent. And I'm either winning or tied. One and I've you, spent practically nothing. One of you will not win this election. So my final question to you tonight, are you willing to accept the outcome as the will of the voters? Secretary Clinton? Well, I support our democracy. I hope the people out there understand this election's really up to you. It's not about us so much as it is about you and your families and the kind of country and future you want. So I sure hope you will get out and vote as though your future depended on it, because I think it does. Will you accept Look, the here's the, the story. I want to make America great again. I'm going to be able to do it. I don't believe Hillary will. The answer is, if she wins, I will absolutely support her. All right.